Welcome to Gold Derby. I'm senior editor Denton Davidson here with Samantha Hawkins, costume designer for the Paramount Plus musical series Grease, Rise of the Pink Ladies. Samantha, this is a period design piece and you take us back to the 1950s and there's an incredible number of looks you came up with, but let's just start with the most obvious here, the Pink Ladies jackets, which was a recreation. How Was there pressure to recreate that or did you sort of just go with the flow on that one and focus more on other things you needed to come up with? I actually can't speak too much to the jackets because I came in on uh, episode four uh, and they were prepping episode, yeah, prepping episode four, shooting episode three. So the jackets actually got done before I got there, but I, I do know that they um, researched and went and saw the originals and that they uh, looked to Rebel Without a Cause uh, for like some inspiration. And, but yeah, I can't, I can't totally speak to that, unfortunately, is broke my heart but yeah well who was your first point of contact I mean who did you meet with to discuss the characters and begin brainstorming what this project would entail in terms of your design and the time it would take to create all of these looks um so Alethea Jones was my point person um I have a friend uh Carrie who's a costume designer as well and she connected me to Alethea and I just had the best time talking with her about the show um and when I started getting some of the scripts to read and uh, create the boards for the characters, uh, it was just super exciting. Cause I, I, you know, Grease, I've always liked, but I've never been like a diehard Grease fan. Um, and to read the scripts and really see the world built out and be a lot more um, open to all kinds of people and stories lines and like the original greasers being like people of color like that was all extremely exciting to me um so yeah just chatting with Alethea about all these characters and then doing the deep dive into research and creating boards for all the characters before I even interviewed I think I had like you know 10 to 15 pages for each character just of reference images and who I thought they were and diving into all of that Wow. What sort of research is that? I mean, how, what is your research process? Um, it's just, it's a lot online, um, finding sort of like troves of photography from the time. And like, you know, it was, it's important to, I think, to like look beyond the obvious places. Um, so it, it takes a bit of a like deep dive to get in there and find um, not, especially for this show, not what you would normally think of as um, like when you think of images from the 50s, like I wanted to make sure that we saw images that included black people and Latino people and just everyone, queer people, like you can find those images, those people existed, but it's just a little bit harder and you have to like dive a little bit deeper, but that, and then like I purchased research books um, written, you know, about the time period and those clothes. Um, and then if, you know, season two hopefully gets picked up. There's research libraries in LA as well that I want to hit up and um, just, yeah, spend hours in. Because once you like have some images, you can really sort of run wild, I think. When you create designs for a musical, does that change how you design at all? Like just knowing that they're going to be dancing and moving a lot, does that, or does, did the flow of that era have a natural or did the designs of that era have a natural flow? Or do you have to emphasize that? So it's interesting. Like I tried to use a lot of vintage um, when I came in because I think it sort of lends an authentic air as well. Um, and, but that you have to be careful with, <laughs> with, you know, musical and choreographer, uh, choreographed numbers uh, because it, yeah, vintage can rip. And <laughs> that's not totally what you want in the middle of a number. Um, so it was really fun and challenging to like figure that out. Um, so for a lot of the numbers we would do builds and, but the fabric is really important to me because it has to look really good. Obviously you want as much stretch as possible, but a lot of like four-way stretch fabrics aren't the prettiest. So um, sort of walking the line of comfort for the actor, being able to dance in it, um, but also still looking really good is an uh, interesting challenge. And a lot of it is like putting gussets in the armpits and, you know, creating leotards and stuff like that, um, that you don't necessarily see as a viewer, but helps your actor out. 
And this series, unlike the film, really focuses in on diversity and not just the cast in general, but there's they, there's focus on discussing it, heritage of these students, whether it's from Puerto Rico or African-American, white. How does that play into the design for these characters, if at all, in terms of the style or colors or materials that you used? Yeah, I it was really exciting. Um, and I, I found the best part of the scripts was that rather than just taking diverse casting, like you said, and putting it into storylines we already know of the time, they actually follow those diverse storylines. Like it's realistic to the people that lived at the time. And I think um, it was just a really great opportunity to like do more research and find the images of Latino greasers and not white greasers from the movies made 10 years later that everyone sort of attributes um, the style to. Um, so it's just about sort of finding the research, finding a way that like the images of how they actually wore the clothes, how they like rolled their sleeves and um, belted their pants and get kind of specific to the characters. Um, and like another great character, I think is Cynthia, who, you know, you don't often get to see um, like a queer character in the 50s, but they existed, you know, like I found great images of like um, drag queens arrested in the 50s, like, and, you know, their full makeup, full looks, and you don't see that much, but like, it's there. And just finding like Cynthia's storyline of she can't always wear what she wants to at school. You know, she would be much more comfortable in pants, but she's not allowed to. And so seeing sort of her uncomfortability with the clothes that she's supposed to wear and then finding ways to get around that. And eventually sort of, we see her more and more outside of school and wearing pants and the stuff that she wants to wear as she becomes more comfortable and like her queerness and who, who she is. Was Cynthia your favorite character to dress or who, or did you have a favorite character or costume? I, Nancy is one of my favorites because uh, I approached Nancy as a drag queen. Um, okay. So all of her looks were just on theme basically as much as we could. Um, she has very few that aren't like in theme, like even when they're voting, it's right at the end of episode uh, five uh, for the, you know, uh, student president. She, you know, she's wearing this look that has a sash that says vote for women that she, you know, like is kind of a play on politics now, but also like for her would be a nod to the suffragettes. Um, and that's the where the design of it came from as the like traditional like suffragette uh, sash. So I don't know, like Nancy is just great because every scene she's in, I'm like, okay, like what's the theme? And like, how would Nancy dress to it? Um, or like when she's rowdy, uh, the horse mascot, and then we see her at the diner and she's wearing a horse sweater. Like she's just always on point with, and like maybe it stretches the uh, believability a little, but it's really fun to do. But I also, I mean, yeah, I loved doing Cynthia's looks. Um, I, there's so why many. Did you, why do you approach Nancy like a drag queen? It can, it, explain that a little bit um because like that's kind of like who she is she is a you know loves fashion I think she uses it to express herself she's very self-confident uh borderline sometimes a bit narcissistic but in a way that I think everyone can relate to or admire especially in like a teenage girl I think it's something that I mean I watch Nancy and wish like I could have been a little bit more like that in high school. Um, I relate to her now, but definitely couldn't at 16. Um, and I think, I think drag queens are a lot about um, tongue in cheek, playfulness, you know, they are so campy, like they just really go for it with like no fear. And I think that's, yeah, that's just the approach I had every time I tried to come up with a new look for her. What was the most ambitious or difficult look to pull off or scene? I, I was watching. I the like yeah. I was watching that casino scene, and I like there that because that's so different from the students. So that really pulls you out of school. Um, yeah. 
So that's one that I was thinking about, but what for you seemed the most challenging? I think the most challenging was the Romeo and Juliet stuff, just from a time standpoint, um, because, and just a design standpoint, it's a lot of built, like all those costumes we built, um, the Romeo and Juliet, and then all of the muslin garments with the black velvet for the cast behind them. And um, they're all like inspired by Dior Balenciaga at the time, because that's where Nancy was looking when she made them. Um, so they have all these like really intense couture, um, like structures to them that were like difficult to build. And then because it's a dance number, like everyone had to have doubles. So we had to make two of each. And then when you get to Buddy's number, um, pulling strings, there's this moment, he has a number within the play as well. And um, we took the idea of those like muslin and black velvet costumes and then made different iterations based on his uh, musical number. So like there was like the kids in this sort of more school looks. And then there was like the football pads that we had to like cover in muslin and everyone had to have new sets of velvet under things. So it just was like a really a large world to create in a in a couple of weeks um when we also were having to build other things and like look ahead to the school dance which is episode eight I don't know if you've seen them all or are only up to seven but eight is like another huge one with everyone's dance costumes and then yeah I would say the Romeo and Juliet was tough but really exciting and also interesting to see a scene of students building costumes. What's it like to be a costume designer on set with a costume build? Was that a first for you? Yeah, it was like to have it like so referenced. I think when Mr. Vaughn is like, ooh, it's like, and now for my treat costumes and then like, you know, goes to the costume room that just like brought me so much joy. Um, and to, yeah, see the forms in the room and the sewing machines and have that sort of just really celebrated and shown like, how difficult it is and Nancy's process. And it was just like really lovely to see. What was your own path to, to this? Were you into fashion or were you always into theater? You know, what brought you to film and TV costume design? So I went to school for fashion design. Um, I've always liked clothing and, you know, felt creative and artistic, but I think I was like, oh, I can't be an artist it has to have some sort of business aspect to it but I didn't love the fashion industry because um, I think it's very sort of short-sighted and tunnel vision a little bit and I fell into um, film because I moved to New York and I went to a Rocky Horror Picture Show where they have the live cast and I made friends with some of them and then was asked to design a music video where I built 40 cardboard robot costumes in four days at uh, my new friend's house, uh, his mom's house in Queens. Um, so I did that and was like, oh, I'm obsessed with this. This is crazy. I didn't sleep, you know, like barely ate. And I was like, this is what I need to do. Um, so it was like a weird entry. I never would have thought I was going to do this. But I, I think my other love has always been like literature and I love to read and I love character and story and world building. Um, like the amount that I loved Lord of the Rings when it came out and uh, watched those special edition like feature stuff um, and was obsessed with what a workshop I, as a kid, like makes sense that I landed here. I just didn't know that that's, you know, where I was going to go. But um, for me, like costume design is just about the character and the story and I don't think people realize how much they say about themselves in the clothes that they wear every day. And it's fun to sort of, uh, yeah, express that and show who people are through their clothing. Well, I think you made the right choice. Uh, Grease Rise of the Pink Ladies is such an impressive achievement in costume design. Samantha Hawkins, congratulations to you and best of luck to you and the entire cast and crew at the upcoming Emmys. And thanks for sitting down with Gold Derby today. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.